Hello, everyone. This is Ray Samuels here for another uh, episode of Toronto Business Journal. Today, we have a very special guest to talk about the Mandela effect. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about the pandemic as well, hopefully. Take it away, Santosh. Hi, everyone. Uh, we have a very special uh, midnight stream today with Harmony. His name is uh, Byron, and we're here to talk about, as Ray just mentioned, the Mandela effect phenomenon, as well as other spiritual and physical happenings uh, in the world today. And uh, as you know, uh, Byron has a very, uh, he's a QHHT practitioner, and uh, we're, he's a uh, very much into the past life regression and he's a very spiritual minded person and so we're going to get a more in-depth look at what's happening in the world today welcome to the show byron welcome Great. byron army speaking so, <laughs> thank, so special thanks for having us for coming on the show today byron as i mentioned before the show i've been watching your uh, amazing videos very thoughtful videos in the mandela effect um i'm both of us myself and Santosh are both experiences of the Mandela effect. I know myself, um, I first sort of um, got sort of aware of the Mandela effect from, um, from a roommate I had in, in um, 2016. Um, he was talking about the Mandela effect and how people were have been talking about, you know, was tragic spelled differently and about <laughs> fruit loops. And I says, hmm. That's kind of strange. So I decided to, you know, go to the supermarket and wait a second. Fruit Loops, F R O O T. That doesn't make any sense. So that was my sort of first introduction to the Mandela effect. But my, in my first experience, I was like one of those things where mm, that's kind of weird. Maybe I'll just forget about it and it'll just go all go away. But to my amazement, you know, as soon as I heard about the Mandela effect, it's just been popping up more and more. Uh, in more so, and um, we, we definitely wanted to get your uh, thoughts and your insights in it because to me, Mandela effect from that sort of innocent experience has become disturbing. I know there's a lot of, when I look in a lot of, um, so, you know, the mainstream videos today, there's this um, uh, sort of allegations, oh, the Mandela effect is just about people forgetting and- uh, Yeah, misremembering. <laughs> yeah, the misremembering yeah. and- yeah. You know, it's the same, to me, just my opinion, in my opinion, the same people who are putting out this idea that the Mandela effect is misre misremembering and all this business, just a whole lot of people remembering things wrong, and the same group of people which are trying to, which is a part of the concealment and censorship agenda going right on the pand pandemic, and so, sort of, uh, so wanted to get your thoughts on what this uh, whole Mandela effect, because to me, and myself with Chantosh and a lot of people out there who are experiencing it, it's a very real phenomenon yeah. of uh, some type of um, manipulation, time, dimensional, some things, all kinds of crazy stuff. So I just want to sketch your sort of insight on what the Mandela effect is all about and what ha your experience has been, uh, Byron. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. What I find fascinating is people think this is something new. Um, I, for, I had my first Mandela Effect uh, experience 25 years ago. Oh. And I know other people have had Mandela Effects older than me that have had Mandela Effects even further back. And uh, it, it would happen like maybe once every three years, once every five years. And you, you didn't think much of it. You know, like I pick up Oscar Mayer bologna at the grocery store and it says mayor. And I go, oh, that's interesting. I throw it in my basket and continue on. You know, my son's watching uh, Cinderella and then there's that part with magic mirror on the wall. And I was like, wait a minute, stop. I was cleaning and I stopped and ran over the TV. Or, wait a minute, I, it doesn't say that. And I was like, oh, it, it's, you know, it's, I watched that so long ago, it's probably a remix. And you just blow it off and blow it off. And then, um, you know, one day, um, I guess, um, so I was talking to a friend. It was like, actually, my granddaughter um, or step granddaughter brought it up to me at first talking about the Berenstain Bears. And, um, you know, I didn't really know what she's talking about. She didn't, like, convey the idea. She didn't, like, turn on YouTube or, or anything. And I didn't really get it. And then a couple months later, a buddy of mine called me up and goes, hey, are, are, you know, the skeletons have changed. And I'm like, what? You got to be kidding me. He goes, look. And we, we sat there for hours looking at it. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then, I, you know, I discovered that the earth is in a different spot. And, you know, and then I started noticing all these Mandela effects. And 
So then I made a video on it. They're not the highest quality videos, but you know, it got the message out. And then somebody, people start posting on like Reddit and above top secret. And then bam, overnight, the Mandela effect like blew up. When I first came on the scene, it's interesting. A lot of people go, well, what about the kids? You know, they're not old enough to have these memories. What people don't know is on YouTube, the Mandela effects are with children. There's all these like five, seven, nine-year-olds just losing their cookies. They're going crazy. <laughs> they're, they're venting. They're like, it's not the bear and stain bear, you know, this, it's not this. And, you know, my Pokemon and Mickey Mouse. And, and then that's what it was. And there's only uh, two people, on two adults making videos. And then I popped on the scene. So I was like the third adult. And then because of Reddit and Top Secret, and it just blew up overnight. And overnight, I was having hundreds of thousands of views. Some of my views got a million views. And unfortunately, wow. my channel did get hacked and shut down. But then I started up oh. two more. Um, but, um, you know, the, the one common theme that I've spoken with thousands of people, and I've had even more thousands and thousands of comments. And I used to do conference calls once or twice a week with, you know, like 25 people at a time. And there's uh, one common theme that I've always noticed is people seem to have four main four main different memories of, of their history, you know, like the two people in the car or four people in the car with, with JFK. And, you know, right. uh, the big, you know, the, the Baron stain, Baron stain bears, and there's like four different versions of that. And I noticed that people always told four main timelines, and they're, they're very consistent in that. So it, it led me to believe that there's four main timelines. But then uh, there's another subgroup that uh, – came from like what seems like two other timelines so out of the thousands and thousands of people i spoke to there's six like distinct timelines that i was able to determine and so this made me believe that you know there's these people are coming from you know six different earths perhaps and wow. um there's a fellow by the name of robert caveat he's uh, known as a top uh, hollywood uh, conspiracy producer he did aliens on the moon and uh, alien T autopsy and he you know, loved the Medell effect and he was blown away too. And he made a scissor reel that's, you know, a promo to get investors. Investors were like, yeah, we want to invest. And so he called me up and, and wanted to talk to me about ideas. And I mean, I literally spent over 20 hours and probably 30 different phone calls. And I was on with, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how to make this a movie. He's like, do we make it a series? What are the different theories? And so we bounced uh, like every theory imaginable. You can think of, you know, simulation, CERN, this, that. I mean, we went over every theory. Unfortunately, the other day, he's like, you know, Byron, in order to get people to pull out a checkbook, write a check for a million dollars, you know, you have to have a conclusion. You can't leave the story open. And so mm. that died out. Unfortunately, he never ended up producing a movie. Somebody else did. As you yeah. Know, we saw that. Different yeah. yeah. So, um, and then, um, so I became a, you know, I'm a QHHD practitioner where we put people in the very deep state of theta about an hour in hypnosis. We get people in touch with their higher selves, we call it. So you can call it your soul, your true self, your essence. It doesn't matter. It's some, something above you, in other words, that has a, a better picture of what's going on in this reality. And truly fascinating things happen. A lot of healing happens. And But because of my genre, a majority of my clients come to me and they want to know about the Medell effect. So this is what I've learned from my, my sessions is that it's kind of like you ask somebody to describe something. If you ask an eagle to just describe reality, you're going to get their view. If you ask a human, you get that explanation. You ask a fish, you get that explanation. So I learned that the higher cells are like different levels and have different experiences in reality. And so you get different versions. But in there, there is one common theme that I saw over and over again is they all tend to agree that um, reality was was one thing i'll just use an example of a slinky so let's say reality in time is a slinky what happened was that you know higher beings decided that this place is really messed up time was messed up they couldn't figure out how to fix it so the decision was made to break apart time kind of like taking the slinky pulling it apart like in a circle and connecting it and then each little like slinky sliver is is a different earth and a different reality and they began working on each little sliver individually and as they get it fixed up enough they start pushing it back together. So while you're on these different little bands of reality, you're having your reality, your experience, and then as reality gets cleaned up, you get pushed onto another reality. So there's a lot of people, you know, a lot of people go like, how can you not remember, you, you know, it was like this. And like, no, it's always been like that. Well, it's because you had two different experiences. And it's just, and, and then now we're all being blended into one uh, one one reality, one timeline, one earth. And as they're being blended together, there's a mesh of all the different memories from all the different timelines. 
So rea- reality is just eventually going to work back into being whole again, and then we'll continue on hopefully and everything will be wonderful is the, the gist I give from my sessions. Wow. So I don't want to do all the talking. Any questions so yeah. far? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, so, uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry you said to us. Oh, no, no. I, I just wanted to mention that I saw in one of your uh, videos that the, the Mandela affected people tend to have, have more empathy and more uh, spiritual in general. Is that... Uh, Something yeah. that uh, uh, it's one of the things I did notice. Um, okay. Absolutely, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah. And is it because that some people are unable to see it? Because I noticed that some people seem to get downloads to the new uh, reality. Whatever um, you tell them, they seem to get the new download. Is that because they're like uh, an NPC, or is that because like oh. something? Um, yeah. 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 Well, boy, that that takes you off into a whole other other spin where you talk about how there's folks in control of this reality, and um, this is a totally different segue, I guess. So basically, you know that th- this place is uncontrolled is con- in control by beings above us. You know, more advanced, whatever. This whole place is run like a Wi-Fi, and the moon uh, has a lot of technology on it. Broadcasts broadcast a signal down to Earth, and that's where you talk, talk about your downloads. And apparently, oh. some people are more easily programmed. Um, oh. Some, you know, some are not. And I think some people just honestly really do. They were just always here, and they just always had these memories. So it's, it's you know, I, I think there's that, that that those folks as well. But what's interesting is that in 2015, supposedly the dark side of the moon was sabotaged. A lot of technology got sabotaged, and I had firsthand knowledge of it. And I thought it was interesting is then all the conspiracy channels and like Simon Parks and Carrie Cassie and everybody start, start talking about how the dark side of the moon was sabotaged, but nobody knows who did it. And I'm like, I know, I can't believe you guys know about it. But, you know, basically the beings that did it, they were even more advanced than them. And they couldn't like see a ship come up and shoot a laser beam down. So they just made the natural assumption that it was sabotaged, but it wasn't sabotaged. It was actually attack from outside. So when that technology got shut down, they stopped broadcasting the signal. And that's why in 2015, so many people began to wake up and, oh. and they started remembering. And so that's one theory. I'm, I'm not saying that's what happened, but um, that is, you know, one theory. I noticed that uh, there was a, a colleague of mine. I started talking to him about the um, empire, like the sort of Statue of Liberty. I said, don't, don't you remember when the... Um, Statue of Liberty was an Ellis Island, and I was on Liberty Island, and because I started saying, there's all kinds of weird things I've been experiencing, you know, and he's like, yeah, 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 he was agreeing with me, and all of a sudden, he froze, like, <laughs> was like this download thing, and yeah. he's like, froze up, and then he, it's like he woke out of some programming, oh, I've seen isn't that. it always like that, you know, that's that kind of weird thing I noticed with people who are, like, you, you speak to them, and some of them agree, and they and they get this download or experiences sabotage has had it, but when people just yeah. run away, they get just scared. And as soon as you yeah. mentioned Mandela effect, it's like you said a taboo thing, and they want to run away. So, yeah, so yeah, I think that. yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you could say there's the the programming that kicks in. That, but the reason, if there is a program, let's say there is, the reason it's so effective is because the way the human brain works is you don't remember something from the first time you remember it. You remember it from the last time you remembered it. So mm-hmm. you you're you know, you're talking about memory, and then, you, and then you talk about this is how it is now. Well, now this becomes a new memory, and then they question it. There's a conflict of reality, and you, they, you, it can drive the person crazy. So the way the brain adjusts and handles reality is they go, oh, I just remember wrong. It was always like that. And then that way, they don't go cuckoo crazy, and they can t- continue on with their lives because they just don't have the, the brain power, the spiritual wellness, where you want to call it. To actually, you know, learn of computer power to, to, to think about these things, and it's easier just to go, you know, air code four four eject, you know. Oh, now I understand a bit more about it. So, with that in mind, uh, one of the observations—I mean, there's a lot of people talking about, like, like I mentioned, logos, and I had the experience of like song lyrics changing and weird <laughs> stuff like that. Like, what's mm. going on with uh, one of the prominent things, which I'm still trying to figure out, is this white sun, like why is the oh, sun yeah, that's a big white? one. Yeah. yeah, it was yellow and it was yeah. smaller, and, and it's now it's now it's like white, bigger, but things on earth appear to be fairly similar from my in my view, understanding of the sun, just a slight how can you change the sun and things be 
relatively the same unless there's some kind of simulation. So do you have any insight on why the sun looks white and why the moon looks fake? Like it doesn't look real to me. It looks like some light projecting in the sky moving around. A bit transparent almost, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, basically that theory is that, you you, you know, you are in, on a different earth or whatever you want to call this place. You're, you, you are actually in a physically different place. Mm -hmm. You know, on your old earth, yes, the sun was yellow. It was all the things you talk about. Everything seemed real. Here, everything seems very fake. And the sun looks like a big flashlight in the sky. The moon, yeah. you know, for people who watch lunar circles, it's supposed to happen a certain cycle, and then all of a sudden it'll be like a, a, a week behind. It's like all of a sudden it went backwards a week. It's like the time just go backwards a week. I've had a, yeah. I, I'm not. I know I've had a lot of astrologers, you know, uh, contact me and talk about these things and how things are not in the right spot. We got a 13th sign here. You know, there's there's a sign called the Ophicus. You know, the the we're in a different you know era than we used to be, and you know every everything is completely different. You know, that, that's it just is because <laughs> we're in a different place, basically. So, so what are the uh, the video which I kind of first discovered you when you're talking about old Earth and new Earth, and we used to be in the Sagittarius belt, and now we're somewhere on Orion. Do you think we actually move physically to another part of the solar system, or what's your sort of concept of where our different place that we are right now? Why the sun is different and the moon is different, and people are a lot of people aren't really seeing that. Well, uh, the simplest way to explain that one is the, the double ganger theory, where there's more than one yeah. version of itself. There's more than one Earth, which also explains moving back between Earths. And the thing is, you know, our entire skeleton has changed. How, how did your, if we're being physically moved, then how did your, your skeleton change? I mean, we, we have mm -hmm. bones on Earth. We didn't have bones behind our eyes. Now we do. You yeah. know, it's in a different place. The veins are different. I mean, it's just a, it's a completely different body. So if they physically move my body here, how how did this happen so the easiest way to explain it i'm not yeah again these are just theories is that your your soul your consciousness actually moved it, it's an easier way to explain that how did it travel that great distance in a shorter time well it's not a, your spirit's not a physical being uh, therefore it's not um bound by the physical laws of the universe and therefore it can violate those physical laws and it can go faster than the speed light and things like that Right. Uh, speaking of doppelgangers, I've noticed some like the celebrity names have changed. Like uh, for me, one that changed overnight, it was it went from James Wood to James Woods, like with a plural. And it, and it actually happened on the uh, the night of the presidential election. So I don't know if there was like a different timeline that switched or something. And my wife uh, was also a witness to it. So uh, also other names like, you know, um, Jim Carrey spelled, spelled uh, differently. So uh, you, you're saying they're like they could be like doppelgangers of the the actual uh, people that were the different name. Right. Yeah. And, and, and in theory, you're a doppelganger too because you have because <laughs> your 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 soul is what's consistent. The body right. is just an empty shell, and okay. you, your soul moves from one biological unit to the next. Oh. And so you have memories of the way the things were in your old Earth. You come right. here, and guess what? Things were never that way. Well, because they never were. It's just you were in a different place and you came here. And right. and so, and then besides, uh, you know, how people will remember things like you do and then all of a sudden change their mind, but then there's people who are just dead set against you because they really do, they don't have any other memories. They've always been here. They haven't been anywhere else. So they're going to be stubborn and say, are you nuts? It's always been that way. You know, I got all the evidence. Uh, there's a thing called residue. There is a yeah. lot of residue if you do a lot of digging. Uh, the channel money bags. He, he's, he's oh yeah, he I've does. seen that. He's very famous. Yeah, he yeah oh yeah. I, I've talked to him many times, and um, so yeah, he's one of the first people too on YouTube. He was one of the early uh, arrivers, I should say. Um, so yeah. So what explains this residue when you people you know when you see like I mean I see in residue the, of the Statue of Liberty being on um, Ellis Island, and then I see in residue of. JFK's car where he was assassinated with uh, four seats instead of six on video. So what explains this phenomenon on residue? Right. Even though everything else, history books have changed, but you still have residues. It's all because of this all entanglement of all these different timelines and it's not really clean. So you're getting these residue as being part of the, the messiness of that bringing together timelines. 
Well, the easiest way to explain that is that we are constantly moving back and forth between realities. So let's mm. let's say a writer and an editor from one timeline move on to this timeline. They write an article. The editor lets it fly because that's the way he remembers it. He's not. They're not going to fact check simple stuff, and so that gets printed, and then it stays here in this reality. And so mm. now it's here because somebody from another reality was here, made it happen, and then they go back, and then and then it, it you know it's here. It's in this reality now. And it's it stuck here now. And so that's how you explain resonance. Uh, uh, yeah, so with that in mind, um, one of the, a lot of the theories that people have had of experience of Mandela effect is that they, they, you know, a lot of theories out there, they, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's because of CERN and some experiment <laughs> and the former Earth mm -hmm. got destroyed. Myself, I don't believe that it was, I don't believe that CERN, whatever, could all that could have, that big kaboom or whatever could have put together uh, a reality and this, which in my personal humble opinion, looks like it was intelligently designed. So what is your take on views that CERN caused all of this? And what's your kind of views on that? I, I, I mean, I've considered it. I've never been a big fan of it. Robert Caveat was a big fan. And I put him in touch with the, my CERN expert. He actually contacted CERN. He wanted. He tried to bring a film crew in there. He had like hired private investigators and to research my friend actually, because he wants to make sure you're not some crazy person that you're legit. And so he spent a lot of money um, of his own, you know, money trying mm -hmm. to you know make it the CERN explanation. Um, you know, I've never been a big proponent on on CERN. Um, I, I I'm I'm sure there's. Um, I mean that that goes down a whole other timeline. Is I mean ba basically, you know that this guy contacted me once. Supposedly, you know he's pretty legit. His his theory was, um, you know, well that also goes into that theory. Um, uh, oh, let me see. Well, let's put it this way. I guess we'll go on a different tangent, different segue here. So I actually know, um, you know, an insider. Um, you know, I used to work. I don't know, should I say this? Mm -hmm. Only say what you're comfortable in saying. Yeah, yeah. no pressure. Well, you know, I used I used to work uh, ten people below the president of the United States of America. You know, and I worked with the CIA and and uh, at Navy Intelligence, and I helped create the airborne early warning wing. So, and I was responsible. You know, I you know what I can tell you what I did on an unclass level. I was responsible for all the classified material that came in and out of the, of the command. And so, you know, it was funny when I first learned about the Mandela effect, I thought this was some kind of weapon. I'd be like, wouldn't it be great if you can take these people with top secret stuff, put them in it like a, like a, like a, like a movie set, you know, create, create a, you know, out in the woods somewhere, clear and create a whole other, uh, you know, make everything perfect and simulate it, create this controlled environment. You go in their home, you drug them. They wake up in a bed. They think they wake up in their reality. You have all everybody looking the same. And, and meanwhile, you got cameras everywhere. And you got listening devices. Like the Truman Show. <laughs> all their their secrets. You, you, you watch. You know, you can take pictures of top secret documents. And then you and then when they go to bed at night, you knock them out. And then you bring them all back home. <laughs> and their beds again. I, I had thought it was like some kind of you know top secret weapon. That's what you know. This is twenty five years ago because that that's what I was involved with back then. So, um, but anyway, I actually know someone who many years later kind of came clean to me and said, well, you know, Byron, there's what's called a, a controlled earth <clears throat> and there's a free earth and they move thousands of people. Uh, so she actually was confirming my, my theory here. She said that they move thousands of people every single day and the, and the, the U.S. Army does all the logistics because you're, you're moving all these people. And basically, they, you know, they like, like you said, they go in your, your arm and they, in your home and they stick you with the needle and they pick you up and they dump you off in this other control of reality that uses, um, they, they're, they're in cahoots with a species that has extremely advanced technology more than you can't even fathom. It's billions of years ahead of us. So they can mm -hmm. recreate the other reality down to the T. They have little um, handheld devices that will like, you know, like the, your book's there and goes boop, boop. And they, you know, the main item is it gets recorded and then when they move to the next place, they, they put the items back and, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it, it's completely insane to even think about it. But, um, you know, and she, she was just saying that, you know, there's a controlled earth and, and a free earth. And, um, you know, that, that's another reason why people, you know, notice things a little askew, but, um, I forgot where I was going with that one. <laughs> I think, in, I think in one of the videos I saw, you had mentioned that this is the control earth and this is the other earth that we're 
aware of as being the free earth where people can, things just went, happen more spontaneously. Whereas right. in this yeah. earth, I find that there's like a, it's like an AI consciousness right. managing yeah. events. You have like serendipity, you have, right. you know, like a lot of times I've gone to the store, I've mentioned this to Santosh where yeah. you're like, you. I, I keep getting like the last thing, the last, you know, the last spaghetti or the last, you know, mushroom uh, or, or the last, like one like time. Somebody placed it there for yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like one time I was in a uh, supermarket and I was like, huh. I was so upset I couldn't find a package of lemons. I was looking around and, and I looked down, wait a second, there's lemons there. It's like, there's like somebody, a magician in the back right. who's watching everybody and he's right. like, he or she is zapping things into the, inserting right. things like a movie script. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's controlled Earth, I guess. Yeah, that's so, controlled Earth. And that's so why the control Earth. That's why the sun looks so fake. That's why the moon, the oh. moon doesn't operate normal. It twisted. Like it's tumbling through the sky, it goes backwards, forwards, and you know, it, yeah. It, it, one one day, like I parked my car at the building, and I noticed the shadow on the building. You know, it's a certain shadow. And the next day, it's complete, it, it completely in a different spot. The very next day, I'm like, it would take three months for that to happen. There's no yeah. way that again. I go to work at the same time every day. Um, you know, I, you know what I'm saying. And like yeah. you say, you know, if you if you think of something, and then all of a sudden, poof, it, it will happen. You know, it, it, it's it's um, it, that's how the technology works. Uh, it's I mean, we're human beings living in a, a let's say fourth dimension. You're dealing with a being that's at least a minimum of the sixth, maybe eighth dimension or higher. Plus, they're billions of years ahead of us. And what they're doing, it, the human beings are just very easy to control because human beings are very adaptive. If something is out of line, like if they were to screw something up and, and, and you were you would normally you. you like wake up, what happened? But your brain is does such an amazing bo bo job of compensating and making sense of it. So then you can just go about your day because we we only we have a limited awareness of reality. And if something is completely yeah. out of line, that doesn't jive with our reality. And there's like this little tilt that goes on the head, and then yeah, we go, yeah, oh, oh it, it, it's this, and then we we blow it off and we move about our day. And so we're extremely adaptive species. And then you have this advanced technology, and we're just like little puppets. I mean, it's child's play. It's 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 so easy for them. Plus, they control time. I mean, right. I do know this for a fact. I've actually seen it. But actually, uh, a simple example is what they do is they can slow down people to where they almost stop. And that's how they get into your homes and stuff and moves around and all that stuff. But there's been a oh. lot of videos. I made one myself about airplanes being frozen in midair. Have you guys seen that one? Yeah, I've seen. I think I've seen videos like that. Like uh, something is just yeah. still. Yeah, like a bird or something was not even flapping its wing. Well, I, it looks like well, glitches, yeah, like, little yeah, glitches. Frozen. You know, because yeah. they're freezing time because they're moving stuff around, they're doing things, you know. So fascinating. And uh, speaking of adaptive, I noticed that even with the whole uh, COVID thing, like the masks now, like everybody just wears it automatically, even without like, uh, like you questioning it. They've just been conditioned uh, to wear the mask and do the social distancing. And then, and the worst part is they make sure the the people around you make sure that you're wearing yours as well. So definitely, yeah. humans are. <laughs> Humans so to keep us the, ourselves in check. Yeah. Is the pandemic like it was? I think Santos yeah. wanted to ask something like this. Is the pandemic yeah. sort of this COVID and all these vaccines a manifestation of the evil consciousness which is controlling this sort of realm of Santos, as to, uh, put it before, uh, this realm? And it's almost like they're trying to experiment on the humans that are here through this pandemic. Like, what is your insight on? how this pandemic and these vaccines sort of interface with this sort of a uh, convert to this sort of Mandela effect process of control earth and free earth. Well, I mean, you know, we're, we're, why, why is the president making such a big deal? There's like in America, there's what 80 million un unvaccinated. So what compared to the total population? What, what, what What's the big deal about having every vaccinated? It's not gonna stop the spread. It'll just supposedly stop people from tying up our hospitals, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, so people go, oh, it's because it's, it's to make you sterile and they want to make you sterile. People say, oh, it changed your DNA and, and then you're, you're going to become a robot. But mm -hmm. how, one thing I haven't heard yet is that it, it's actually fact. There's a species here that cannot walk amongst us where the, the germs and bacteria we have on us are highly contagious to them and they will kill them. And that's why they can't walk around the planet and take it over. They can't take this place over because they can't, they'll die. We, we will literally kill them. 
well, I haven't heard this out there, and I'm not saying I believe this, just just a thought, food for thought, an idea. What if the vaccine makes it so that this alien species can now walk amongst us? We're no longer contagious to them. What if the vaccine is for another species so they can, so then they can take, walk among us and take this place over? And that's why he's making such a big deal, because if there's 80 million Americans, I don't know about the rest of the world, but you know, they're not they with 80 million um, million Americans walk around unvaccinated, they're contagious to species, it'll still kill the species. So they gotta get everybody vaccinated so the species can walk amongst us and take over America or who knows what else. I'm not saying I believe this, just just a thought. That's an so interesting might, theory. So yeah. it's, there might be a sort of a, an alien an agenda where the uh, vaccines are working to uh the, to neutralize some part of human protection against these aliens. Uh, that too. Neutralize. Okay. Easier to control. Put it under control. Oh. So um, oh. one thing which I've also noticed, you know, perhaps that may be a part of the Mandela effects as well, is that there are sort of, um, not only do I notice um, a sort of a growing evil consciousness that's with this sort of control Earth Mandela effect context, but I also notice um, an increase in vanity and mm. treachery. Now, what I what I mean by vanity, an example of that is that I was reading like a, just a yesterday, Facebook posts, um, person, you know, they decided they were pregnant, um, decided that they were going to take the vaccine so they, they could go to, because they didn't, they were upset, they couldn't, you know, had to have the passport, you had to, you know, they couldn't go to restaurants, so they just mm -hmm. risked it, taking the vaccine, and, and and as a result, now their their child is stillborn, oh and the gosh. grandmother is complaining about it. She wants to sue the government. Now, my understanding of the humans that I know in what you would call the free Earth is that a mother would probably be think twice about taking something she's not sure about when she's just about to deliver. So I'm just wondering if you have any insight. I'm just seeing that there's more kind of. People kind of um, like on, when there's online dating, people yeah. are more sort of into the narcissistic. Okay. They're look, they're flaunting, they're showing up, they're yeah. getting more vain, there's more vanity. And they're also getting the other thing which I'm finding is that people are becoming, for lack of a better word, it's more stupid. I mean, before this Mandela yeah. effect, I never yeah. met anybody who's stupid, but there are people who are just doing things with this pandemic, with these vaccines that don't make any sense to me. Like there's one person I read on Facebook, she's, she knows she got sick from the, um, from the vaccine, but she still wants to boost her. I mean, there are people who know something yeah. is making them sick. And they don't think it's a conspiracy theory, but they're still willing to like, you know, they're jumping, you see them jumping, there's a cliff right there. They jump right over it. And you when you're telling them there's a cliff there and it's the sign that says cliff, they're calling us conspiracy theories. So I was wondering if you have any insight on how this sort of vanity, st the stupidity is sort of enabling this evil. Are they kind of working together or that's just that's some sort of coincidence? We were just wondering if you have any insight on, because one time I think Santosh was mentioned about something you heard about dark matter being released. And that's why people are becoming, some people are big, appearing to be more stupid. But I just felt like before this Mandela effect, um, I know I have never met a, honestly some of these two. I met people who were educated, but that was just formally educated. They were still pretty smart. But now I'm just finding people just doing things. It's like they're not as it's like I'm meeting people with a little bit of with some part of their brain missing that's causing them to skip on basic cognitive areas that I take for granted and people I know who experience the Mandela effect take for granted. It's like a lot of people I'm, who don't, who aren't aware that the sun is white now or are not aware of the Mandela effect. It's like those same people have, have I find them to have personality wise and something about them, they just seem to be off as people, you know? Yeah. So just, and I've also got, there's also, I've seen videos on this phenomenon. I'm not sure if you heard about it called the background people. Yeah, yeah. Where, oh, yeah. The Lord's yeah. Band. yeah. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that where you're like, you're just like, you know, like one time I was downtown Ottawa. There was hard, I said, wait a second, there's hardly anybody there. All of a sudden, these people just show up. 
yeah. like 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 uh, like stage extras of a movie. It's like the yeah. weirdest thing. So do you have any insight on that phenomenon? I've as seen well? the backdrop people even change right before my eyes, like their shirt color will change or like it, it just little discrepancies among the people. So it's very in interesting. Yeah, right in front of my eyes. I can't believe it. Like I have to look twice just to uh, see if it's the same person. But yeah, it's uh, so yeah. yeah, any insights on that? Yeah, well, the easiest way to explain that is that you're, you're dealing with people. Well, it's like this. We have different cultures, you know, like people in Japan act different than the people in the Middle East and Europe and America. And so they have certain traits in the way that they act and think and be. Well, the people that you've seen are, are acting the way you say are, I think they're just folks that have always been here. And that's the culture of this place. They're more dumbed down. They're more controllable. You know, if there's a technology being downloaded, they're more acceptable to it. You know, they're they're. Uh, just, they're easy to program, in other words, and they're just a certain way. Where we came from a different reality, a different timeline, different Earth, and you know, we are the way we are. And uh, if, if, if I were to take a wild guess, have nine billion plus people on the planet, I would say there's only a billion of folks like us. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So it seems like the majority are out there. Yeah, so. because from my experience, I know in terms of the Mandela effect, I I almost thought it was more like less than one percent because it's like mo like mandela you know like with uh Santos, i mean i don't meet too many people that have experienced mandela effect and one of the things i noticed that the people who do experience the mandela effect seem to be like relatively ordinary people like that's one of the weird things i find i don't i don't know whether famous people just don't want to talk about the mandela effect or they're just not experiencing that but anybody i know who i think is aware, you know, people who even will talk about aliens, you know, all these people, you talk about Mandela effect, it's like they're ready to get a download, they don't know what you're talking yeah. about. And these yeah. are people that talk about aliens. So yeah, yeah. One, one good example is uh, we, we interviewed David Icke, uh, and he sim simply said that he won't talk about the Mandela effect. Like, I mean, is that okay to bring that up or? Yeah, so uh, what, should, is there any yeah. reason why famous people don't seem like to Alex Jones, be aware of the Mandela effect? Is that yeah. some coincidence? Yeah. Or is it because we're hand-picked and yeah. only the hand-picked ordinary people are part of this Mandela effect? Well, I, I'm not aware of him saying that. So does, does he just say, I don't want to talk about it? Or do you think it's more like he doesn't know anything about it? Um, oh. Well, I, I, think there, I think there are two. I meet two groups of people. I meet people who it just doesn't seem to be a part of their their awareness. They, they, they you know those are the people who are susceptible about to downloads. And then I meet another group of people which I call lucid characters. Um, I find that in this realm, there are people who are quite aware of the Mandela effect, but they intentionally spread mis disinformation. You find them mm -hmm. on Facebook's group. You know, yeah. I, I'll mention about the um, so or some will mention about the sun being white, and they'll come up with this elaborate theory why it's, why 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 the sun is burning white. I mean, there are people who the people who are which give a all these which go out of their way to give yeah. to either cover up or yeah. to give some like elaborate the explanation yeah. which doesn't make any sense. I call those elusive characters of this Mandela effect. They know there's a Mandela effect going on, but their role is operatives of whatever who, of whatever is the intelligent design is behind them. And that's just my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but I find there's those are the two groups. The people who are just not a part of their, their matrix or whatever the matrix is here. It's not a part of their mind, so they're completely controlled or the lucid characters which are spreading disinformation. So do you have any insight on that, Byron? Well, I mean, you, you, you could say that, like you mentioned, uh, you, you know, you, if you think of something and like it all of a sudden appears, or if you, you notice there's not people, all of a sudden they appear. What if you were to wake up and realize you can actually control all this reality? And that would be a reason to shut it down because if, you, if it gets too, too outspoken about how everything is different and it begins, you start to question reality and, you, and then you, really begin to think about these things because um, the one theory is that they, in the controlled earth, one of the reasons they bring us there 
It's because they, they as, as advanced as their technology is, they can't create. Where we are spirit, more spiritual beings, advanced in essence, when we um, on our in our true selves to have the ability to create. So they mm-hmm. put us in this like blank movie set, and we think of things, and then they start popping up. So it's actually you're the one making that item appear on the shelf. You're the one making the backdrop people appear. You're the one that who's creating all this. And they don't want you to know that you are actually in control of reality and you're contri- controlling everything. But because of all the programming, you know, from birth up, all the programming, we've been taught that we don't control this reality when in fact we do. So mm-hmm. that would be a very big secret that you want to keep hush hush. And if you start talking about the metal effect, uh, your life becomes a living hell. And you get messed with death. I mean, my life was, I, I haven't done Medell effect in a while, but I mean, my mm. life was living hell and I got screwed with like crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of that too. I'm not, I'm not talking about just the trolls, you know, mm-hmm. but you get trolled to death, but all kinds of weird stuff happen. And you start getting, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into all of it, you know, but. Yeah, I heard yeah, some so- support guy, he, he started to lose a lot of money in his business all of a sudden, as soon as he woke right. up to the Medella effect. And uh, some one of his partners cheated him of. Uh, uh, we actually were uh, like, and then he shared all his bad experiences. Like before the before he was Mandela left it, he was like doing fine, and all of a sudden it seems almost like some kind of entity was like messing with him. Uh, right. For some reason, yeah. So so uh, one one um one uh, thing I wanted to bring up is that. Um, a, a phenomenon which I've noticed with the Mandela effect is that how it affects um, families. I know for myself, mm-hmm. yeah. um, where the worst thing I noticed is um, back in 2000, up to 2012, my my family was like just completely normal, except for my sister who started becoming psychotic in 2009. Mm-hmm. But all of us in the family just kind of looked at her like, huh, what's the matter with her? And then all of a sudden, in January 2013, this the psychosis from my sister all of a sudden started manifesting in my uh, my father and the rest of my family and then other people the Mandela effect talk about this uh, how it affects their family and how and I noticed that there was a there was a conscious effort um, to try to push you away from your family by mm-hmm. by various um, entities which mm. appeared to be human, but it was as if they were trying to intervene to intentionally dispossess you of your family connections and isolate you. And right. I noticed that, and I've heard people talk about that as well, about, you know, their wife became a son and a different person. Yeah. There's some, there's a girl in the closet and who's talked about on YouTube about all her family looks different. So do you have any sort of insight on like um, this phenomena where, this, there is some consciousness of this control earth is trying to dispossess you of your previous family associations? Well, that, that does seem to be a, re, a very common thing. And it, it goes back to, you know, controlling you. And, mm-hmm. you know, they, they do run a lot of experiments. Even our own government does this, how, you know, you know, mm-hmm. how to people, okay? Everybody knows CIA does this. Um, so, you know, now if you're, you're an advanced species and you, you know, want to control people, so you run different experiments and do different things. And if some people just can't be controlled, then what's what do they got left? They they isolate you. They, you know, and so that's kind of the last step to the mind control to get you isolated. So one one thing was my when this thing was happening in 2013, um, my father he used to um, he used to. Have, have these psychotic episodes where he would switch out from one personality to another. He would be completely normal. And then his eyes would suddenly be light up like he was possessed. And he was like, go crazy. And then when he, and in his normal state, when he switched back, he started talking about, he started warning people about the extraterrestrial threat and how it was going to, the extraterrestrial was going to come. He would just bring this up randomly in his normal state state and then he would go back to some psychotic violent state until this violent state completely took him over and when i um when i when I, and then he started talking about these aliens contacting him in in these dream states uh-huh. and then i says uh and then i started doing some readings and he says uh, i said could they be the fallen angels and he says oh 
don't say he all of a sudden became scared when I scared when I said fallen angels and I've never seen him scared before. So it was like he's like body snatchers, alien body snatchers. So do you have any insight in what's that going on? Is, is that is that again it's because of these they're trying to control they can't control you, so they'll isolate you. Is that what's going on with that? Yeah, they'll isolate you, but you know, as far as the body snatcher thing, I mean I know they the species, there's a, there's a species out there that can do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the things they use or how they get in. It's apparently it's not easy peasy. They have to get you in a certain psychological state of condition. They, you, there's a certain way of being. And then once you're in this condition, then they can literally jump into your body and they can literally possess you and take you over. And that, and, and you know, they can move around, do stuff. And now they're in control of your body. There's a species that's really not physical and they, they're, we are physical and the only way to be here is to possess things. And, you know, that's what they do because they want to experience this physical reality that we have, you know, and they pop in, they pop out. They usually don't stay, my knowledge, I could be wrong. They don't stay too long, but, you know. I think I felt that, uh, especially when I'm asleep, sometimes I feel like some other entity is like trying to like, trying to come into my body and then I wake up and then like it just, you know, everything goes back to normal. And uh, I think in the nighttime when you sleep is when they try to do that more often. Uh, oh, absolutely. Something like yeah. sleep paralysis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I call it dreamland. It's like you, you yeah. go to sleep at night and that's when they really run their experiments. And oh. that's when they really do all kinds of crazy stuff. And they, they spend all night programming you. You know, if you, you know, you know, but then there's folks that, the, the uh, you know, in the sleep, the programming, they just don't take to it. And it still doesn't work to wake up. The idea is, you get programmed all night, you wake up, and then, you know, you act the way they want you to act. But not everybody is susceptible to this programming. Hmm. So there's, there's a lot of people on the um, these Mandela Effect face groups, which, um, which uh, you know, have this belief. And again, I wanted to mention that again about the old earth being, you know, the CERN and the old earth being, like, basically destroyed. And in my view... Yeah. I think that's disinformation. I think that's disinformation because I think that whatever the intelligent design that's behind this realm doesn't want us to think that the free earth still exists. So if we all think it was destroyed, we're not going to try to find some way of getting back to it. So is, yeah. it, so do you, so yeah. is the free earth still there with our families and normal intact and we're just being where our consciousness is somehow put here while the free earth still exists. Is that possible? Or what do you, what's your insight on that? Whether if the, if this is just, we're here and the earth that we know where the Statue of Liberty is on Ellis Island, where there's a yeah. yellow sun, is that still intact in the Sagittarius belt or wherever it is? Well, the, the theory is that when the dark side of the moon got attacked in 2015, that that shut down their technology to move us back and forth between these earths so, so much. And we got stuck here. And because we're stuck here, um, we started noticing more and more and more. Usually you're uh -huh. just here for a few days, three days, a week, maybe, maybe a month, I don't know. And then they uh -huh. put you back. And then everything's normal again. And then they bring you here for a short period of time and then they put you back. And then when the technology got shut down, they couldn't move you back and forth anymore. You get, we got stuck here. Is basically mm -hmm. stuck in, I don't know, there's, there's like this big thing, you know, we're over here and here, and they, they can get us here and here. They can't get us across the, the galactic center anymore to those sides where we come from. And then when the technology got broken down, we all became stuck. Now we can just move between these little Earths over here. So that's that theory. Um, actually, there was one YouTuber, I don't know if you've heard of him, it's called Bluebeard. And uh, he oh. would uh, actually, yeah, yeah. He would always uh, make videos saying that he would go back and forth. Like oh, yeah. his family exists on the old earth. And yeah. then I think in the new earth, the current Mandela affected earth, his family doesn't exist anymore. So he would go back and forth. And well, uh, yeah, is he part of some kind of experiment or is it like his own? I don't, we don't, it was very well, interesting. His family he has two children that are, yeah. that don't exist in one reality, but they do exist in the other reality. Yeah. So it's not the and it's two children. So in one reality, the two children were never born. In the other two reality, they were. And he yeah. just he's back and forth. Now, um, there must. I'm just assuming there's something special about him where they 
um, are able to still move him back to his old Earth because he's these stories are pretty rare um, mm-hmm. that they exist, but they're just so rare that they're so you know I would I would think people would have more if if we were all experiencing it as a collective I think we'd hear a lot more stories but these are so rare so I'm thinking there's something special they're like part of a special project in other words mm-hmm. it's like maybe they can't move us back the way we used to but they can still put them on a spaceship and fly them back but they can't fly a billion people back and forth no. they can. They can choose a couple of people, put them on a spaceship and fly them back. And I, yeah. I'm guessing he's one of the chosen few. Probably not a good chosen, but <laughs> secretly I don't know how you want to look at it. But I think yeah. he's one of the chosen few and part of a special project where he actually gets transported back and forth still. Wow. And I even saw a YouTuber saying that he knew these twin sisters in his uh, old reality. And all of a sudden in this timeline, he asked uh, one of the sisters, hey, where's your other sister? And she looked Never. at him puzzled. There was never a sister. They were never twins. That's uh, those are pretty shocking uh, tales, you know. So there's yeah. going on something. Like, so, well, it's pretty, um, it's interesting is it's it's pretty easy to get a hold of me, and I mean, there's been people in my group that try to put me in contact with him. I've tried to contact him. He's tried to contact me, and oh. we've been able over all these years never once been able to talk to each other. Oh. But he'll he's managed to get some text through me. And he describes, it's like, hey, which buyer? Hey, hey, I'm back. Are you this Byron? Yeah, do you remember me? And he'll say some things. I'm like, I've never talked to you. He goes, damn, so you're the other Byron. Okay, oh. never mind. Later. <laughs> 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 so he got your doppelganger, I guess. Yeah. Wow. So, That's, so on the, uh, on the one of the um, things which I've kind of thought about is that on the free Earth, um, is there some sort of... Um, sort of, so, uh, for lack of a better word, some kind of um, cloned, manipulated, artificial consciousness, which are put in our place there to give the appearance that we haven't left? Or are we just missing? Like, what would what mm-hmm. would you guess is ourselves? Now, if we're, our consciousness is here, where what is going on in the free earth to the extent to which it still exists in terms of our presence there? Well, that goes back to your double ganger theory, but as far as clones, yes, they they clone people. So mm. there's a, that's also, I believe, is true as well with both. Both. So it could be like, oh, but we're not missing. Santosh, this is a weird <laughs> Santosh. I remember the, yeah. the, the the Santosh. So Santosh is his his true self is now here. Now they have some artificial weird Santosh. This has been yeah. acting strange since two thousand. 13 or whatever walking <laughs> over in the free earth there so it's like it did happen to me actually i wanted to share one small story about me yeah, like uh, yeah. i went into a, a bar uh, that i normally went to but i haven't been there in a while and as soon as i walked in i sat at the table the manager came and said uh, i'm sorry <laughs> sir we can't serve you because the way you behaved uh, <laughs> the last time yeah. you were here <laughs> I, was, I was like what what are you talking about and then the, it was he said that somebody that looked a lot like you actually like behaved in a certain bad way, and we weren't sure at first. And then he is my doppelganger had had gone to that place and like done something bad, and it was it was very bizarre. It was very surreal. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just sharing my own personal. Yeah, story. yeah, that's kind of yeah. where kind of where yeah. where I mean, yeah. I've had an experience in a restaurant where. Um, oh. a sort of an, an, a sort of a, a different sort of a diversion experience where um, a restaurant that I always go to is an open bar concept. Uh, this guy, this chef, I've never seen him before. And oh. he goes to me, oh, welcome back. And I'm thinking, <laughs> welcome back. I've never seen you before. And this is an open concept restaurant. Is it, I've, I've noticed sometimes that people who, who act as if they know me um, I've never met him before, but they like assuming that this is sort of assuming yeah. that we've met before or another even more of a weird prominent experience I've had in that Santosh has talked about it before where you're walking around and it's like people are looking at you like they're observing you, like there's some yeah. kind of alien beings kind of. Yeah, you know, and like, then they look away. You know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, like uh, people would watch animals in a zoo or in a conservation area and stuff like that. And so there's like some alien, some human avatar of an alien watching from where, whatever, 
looking in from a close and is not really. So it's kind of like weird experiences of being observed and watched all the time. That's what I have with this Mandela effect. Do you have any sort of experiences and inside of this feeling of being watched, um, Byron? That you didn't <laughs> have before? She made an account. I mean, come on. Yeah. She made an account, yeah. I mean, I just I just felt felt it like a, I, I've never had an experience before the Mandela effect, I never had an experience of like feeling like you're being watched by strangers, like you're being observed for, in some scientific observation. You know, well, like, yeah. like you're in a petri, yeah. like you're in a fishbowl, some sort of petri dish. It's very strange. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah, no, I've had that too many times now. Yeah. So, and, uh, and I've also like, you know, like, um, you know, all kinds of... Um, observations about like the the clouds being kind of um you know closer to the ground it seems and all kinds oh, okay. of weird nuances and yeah yeah but i guess it's symptomatic of the so one other question i wanted to ask is um why why does it seem to be such an eagerness by whatever the intelligent designer is to try to conceal this is the is that they want to conceal this reality because if we're aware of it, we're going to be, we're going to act in a different way. Like I just find there is a whole lot of effort to try to put out this propaganda on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, this is just misinformation. These people are hallucinating. And uh, this, this, this is why I call the lucid entities, which know there's something going on, but they're trying to cover up just like with the vaccines. They don't want to, they don't want you to know that there's, children something's bad you know bad happening so they want cover like what's all that's going on with this what's the motivation behind the cover-up and concealing the mandela effect is some sort of a uh, misinformation agenda well the simple answer is that they won't be able to hood hoodwink you anymore you know won't if be able you, to do what they won't be able to hoodwink you anymore oh i see okay yeah. i mean if, if you know what's going on and how they're going to fool you anymore you know, it's kind of like the game tic-tac-toe. When you're a little kid, you, it was a great game, and you actually would lose, and the other guy would win. It was, you know, a, a challenging game. But one at one day, you came to the realization that it's a game that's impossible to win. And you learn how to play the game, and once you learn how to play tic-tac-toe, then you didn't, you never lose the game ever again the rest of your life. And the game right. becomes useless. You can't play it anymore. They, they can't play their game. You, you'll ruin the game for them. Mm -hmm. You only play their game as long as you don't know what's going on, right? And it's like a, the we. It's almost like we've evolved. We're evolving past the three D uh, world, and we're going like something beyond ourselves. Like there's some kind of collective consciousness uh, uh, raising the vibration, as you mentioned in one of your videos going on. Um, mm -hmm. But so, you also mentioned Byron yeah. about um your view that the um the flat earth is some kind of uh, disinformation or whatever do you have any sort of perspective to share and how flat earth fits in this you can call us i think you call it a psychops the flat earth well i mean a lot of people well with my personal experience i used to be an air traffic controller and i was at a tracom facility which simply means we have airspace up to thirty thousand feet out to 60 miles we controlled um five airports and um, my radar scope, you know, I was in Maine, Brunswick Bay, and my radar scope went out 350 miles. And when I get bored at night, I, I could, you know, dial it down. I could see the Boston air traffic and aircraft has transponders. So I can see their airspeeds and altitudes and I can see them, you know, pretty much landing on the ground down to a couple hundred feet. And when I lose contact with them on my radar. So according to the flat earth model, I meant to do this earlier, but it's like so many feet per something squared is the, the curvature of the Earth model. So the Earth is, has this curve. So in order for me to be in Brunswick, Maine and see all the way down to Boston, you know, according to the, the if you do the math, I would have to be 86, about 86,000 feet or 82, something like 82,000 feet up in the air in order to, to see around the curve because I'm here and Boston's here. You know, I, we can't see each other. So the only way to have a direct line of sight is if I'm way up here, then I can see down and see Boston. Um, airport surveillance radar is microwave. Microwave doesn't bounce off clouds. It doesn't curve around the earth. Microwave is a straight line. So how the heck am I seeing aircraft, you know, 
from Brunswick, Maine to Boston. It's literally impossible for my radar to pick that up. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. So there's only mm-hmm. one conclusion. The Earth isn't round like they say it is. That's, yeah. that's the only conclusion you can make. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in the flat Earth uh, movement that I'm also like going through it. It's uh, it's a, uh, but uh, again, that's a whole other uh, you know, it, like some people. I also saw, saw like you see what you want to see. Like some people who have gone out of body and in like outside the Earth uh, realm, they see like a globe, and then some people reportedly they see a, like, so I guess consciousness uh, changes. I mean, the physical matter changes according to the consciousness. Uh, once we're uh, in the fourth or fifth dimension. Uh, is there any truth to that? Or? Yeah, it's an interesting theory you can go down. I'm not ready to go that, down that direction yet. I kind of wanted to stay more on topic. Another thing is that, um, yeah, shit, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> I'm just going blank. Um, and, oh, yeah, so back, I forgot the exact year. It's like 1930. Um, uh, is the first person to have a, a, a balloon. He went up, I, I might be wrong, something like 100,000 miles. He went way the heck up there, let's just say that. Mm-hmm. And Poplar Science uh, reported what he said. You can, it's, it's, I, I'm just my understanding, you can still buy this copy today and, and have the original print. And they asked him when he came back what the earth looked like. He said, The higher up, he goes, The higher up I got, the earth looked flat. And then when I got yeah. to the high point, the earth, not, it didn't look flat, it looked concave. It looks yeah, like, yeah. So it's observation, it like it, and it's yeah. concave, and they published that because back then they didn't know. Even the the, the insiders didn't know the reality we lived in, so they didn't they didn't have a, a cover up yeah. set up. They didn't have the disinformation, you know, campaign. They didn't have the CIA to, the, in, in the media to the to, NASA to, and all that. You stuff. know, <laughs> they didn't have the party lines. Like if you're going to report on something, you can say this, you can say this, you can't say that. So there was no. Right. You know, set up, and that's mm-hmm. why it got put in print, and it, and then it got put out. And they couldn't, you know, people have these in their homes, and they couldn't get, they couldn't cover up anymore. And and that's, I mean, popular science reporting this guy saying the Earth is a big disc and it's concave, you know. And then and then come on, the, the, all the NASA stuff, we can go there. That's so much fakery; it's ridiculous. I mean, they had their yeah. the woman's hairspray. And you know, yeah. she's in space, she moves her yeah. head and her head goes doing, 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 doing. Yeah, a lot of right. videos exposed. Um, yeah. That green happen screen as well. Yeah. <laughs> a lot and of green screen. Lens. Everything is a fish yeah. eye lens. Oh, Every. yeah. So, yeah. Fact, so, you know, some, and yeah. you have, you know, can we just, you know, take a picture, you know, of the earth without the fish eye? And just give me, yeah. I just get, you know, one good picture of the earth, you know. Yeah. We only have two pictures of the earth. And the and the, yeah. and the and the latest one we have, I think, it was back in 1972, 1974. Yeah, that doesn't That's make sense. Picture of Earth we have. How come we we got all these satellites? Yeah. We're going yeah. to space, doing all this stuff, but we don't have the current picture of the Earth or of a video. I would like a 4K video of an actual Earth rotating like globe. Right. From I know it's it's very mysterious, but uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, definitely a lot of, um, you know, crazy, uh, mysterious things going around. Uh, one of the kind of uh, theories I saw in one of the videos is that um, this, you know, allegedly real, this realm is controlled by, um, like, uh, one allegation, some kind of clone entities, and there was other entities that kept trying to make us realize what's going on. So they kept trying to interrupt the control programming matrix. That's another sort of a theory I saw as well. So um, one of the things I'm trying to, so is this realm basically the the entities which are responsible for this? Uh, Can we, are they basically negative manipulative entities which are responsible for, for this trying to somehow exploit this technology for self-serving purposes in terms of this from the free earth versus the control earth. So is the control earth basically a domain of these negative entities? Is that a, is that a, a fair statement or what, what's your insight on that in terms of the, the type of consciousness, which the, the negative or whatever consciousness which are responsible for this type of uh, realm? Well, 
of control. It's a question. It's a rather long, long one, probably a five minute story. So, um, um, so uh, one of the things you mentioned, Byron, is that your um, practice, you're, you're sort of a QHHT practitioner. And since we've been talking about the Mandela effect, um, how does, if someone's ex watching this, they're experiencing the Mandela effect, they're kind of confused, they're disturbed what's going on. Um, uh, what sort of areas professionally can you help them sort of, uh, for people who are feeling a sense of spiritual confusion, they're disturbed, they're concerned, like how do you, how does your practice help them through their the struggles that they're having? Um, absolutely. So what I found is that, you know, people, their true selves, higher selves, their souls, whatever you want to call it, they don't fit into a cookie cutter box. Everybody has mm -hmm. a unique different experiences at different levels. I talked about, you know, the, the bird example, the human, the fish, you get different um, expressions of this reality. And so each each session, obviously, it's one on one. It typically will last four hours from start to the very end. You're under hypnosis, usually an uh, hour and a half. So there's mm -hmm. pre talk after talk, there's a client intake form, you know, that type of thing. But um, so you basically come with uh, at least 20 questions, your life printing questions, I call them, that you want answered. And when you're, you know, about an hour in the session, we get you in contact with your higher self. And I just simply ask the questions that you've given to, to, give, given to me ahead of time. And your higher self answers the questions very personally to you specific to you in your situation it's and if, unless you want a global answer you can ask a global question but they're very it's very personal and people um you know get their life burning questions answered which gives them a lot of satisfaction they they get a, a whole new learning and insight and a, a, a sense of peace and they're they're they feel more in tune with the universe and source and they they tend to you know they do have very amazing life-changing experiences um, most people don't even need a second session most people only need one session and, and that's all they ever do you're welcome to have a second one if you want it goes a lot quicker the uh, follow-up session is only like two hours um <clears throat> so it's um you know it's difficult when you go through life and you just you have all these questions and it's you know, you're just you're just wondering what the answers are and it's just such a wonderful thing to be able to in essence get the answers from your higher self so it's, it's a very beautiful thing. Um, one of the, um, yeah, thank you very much for you know, taking the time to kind of uh, explain about all the wonderful work you do in terms of your practice, Byron. Um, one of the um, phenomena which I've sort of seen by, for example, people who have um, done sort of regression hypnosis on alien abductees is, is the phenomena oh. of um, missing time, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the I, things is I'm wondering, um, I'm not sure if you know about it, but this is, was this interesting sort of science fiction many years ago called Flash Forward, where where people would sleep and wake up, and there was this all kinds of things happening during their time which they weren't aware. So, is it possible that the you know Mandela effect and people who go through the regression hypnosis with yourself uh, experience sort of um, missing time where things were were going on? that people didn't know about because that was where the aliens were or some entities were doing things that we weren't aware about and this has now produced the Mandela effect. So is, is it possible that missing time is a part of part of this whole Mandela effect phenomenon? Um, I mean, it's possible, but I, I haven't found that to be the case. Um, you know, thank goodness I did go to, um, you know, master's program for psychology. So I do have a psychological background. So it's, um, when when I have clients that have been abducted, it's, those are some of my, my most difficult cases because mm -hmm. um, they're traumatized, and it's not like when they go through it live and then their memories are wiped and they come back and they don't have to deal with it. And so now I got them, you know, under hypnosis and they're remembering it, and they come out of the hypnosis and they remember that event. And it's very tragic, and those take. That's one of the reasons we have at least it's, you know a two hour follow up after the session is to discuss all the things you went through. And to make sure that you can come to terms with it and understand it and, and cope with it, because we don't want to cause more damage than good. And um, the higher self is essentially responsible for the session, and they don't reveal information unless they think the person's ready for it. And 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 I found this to be very true. It was traumatic, but you know, working together with the person, we can get them through it. Um, 
but yeah, I've, I've had many clients that have been abducted and they came out during hypnosis and it's, it's, it's not pretty <laughs> just, uh-huh. you know, it's, it, it's just like the movies and all the stuff they do in the probings and the, the pain is, is just, um, maybe I, I don't really see this on TV, but my clients, they talk about the pain, the excruciating pain and, and, and the isolation and it's all cold and sterile and how terrified they are. And, the, the pain is just un, unbelievable, you know, the things that are done to them. So it, it's, um, you know, but, I, you know, I can handle it. It's very difficult, but I can handle it. So during the abdu- abduction, they, they actually take their physical body to the ship and yeah. they do all these things? Oh, okay, it's not just the, like their astral body. It's no. Their actual physical. Wow. They take their physical wow. body. That's and amazing. is that a part of the Mandela effect that what, what you're, the, this, process of being this alien abduction process that's part of the mandela effect well not not the stereotypical alien abduction that you're talking about in the media no um mm-hmm. there's an aspect to it but not what you're in referencing to no okay so it's more of a <laughs> metaphys- <laughs> metaphysical say again it's more of a metaphysical type of of a, of a alien intrusion you in reference to the Mandela effect? Well, in terms of like people who have the Mandela, who come to you with the Mandela effect, and they go through your session, and they're 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 sort of a is part of that sort of process is potentially seeing um, alien consciousness as a as a part of their regression. Well, in my sessions, the alien abductions have nothing to do with the Mandela effect. They're two different oh, topics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It's so separate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to clarify that. So. They're having pain, but it's more of a introspective. Well, no, they're they're being experimented on. They're having things like you know you hear the stories where they get probed. Well, that's oh, actually like, yeah. it's extremely yeah. painful. You know the things yeah. they're doing to them are very painful. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. Okay, and are people who um, experience Mandela effect? Are they uh, do they tend to have similar experiences like that, or that's just some? People like having no, that kind of well, I mean, it, it's been rare for me. Yeah, you know, I, 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 it's just the type of clients I get. I, it's rare for me to get an alien abduction client. It's pretty rare. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But, but the well, think, about- um, well, see, the higher self won't. The, the way it works is there's safety protocols put into effect. This method's yeah. been around 35 years, developed yeah. by Canon. So yeah. the higher self is not going to present any information that the that they do not believe the person can handle. So mm-hmm. probably, I would say most people can handle it is a more accurate answer. And that's yeah. why it doesn't come up because most people can't handle it. Oh, I see. It, it, the higher self, I think, makes the judgment that'd be better for them not to know because they can't cope with it. And right. it would oh. benefit them to know. Only, oh. see, the things that come out of the session are designed for your benefit. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, I've, had, I've had people ask questions you know, like I said, I read the question, the higher self will just flat out say, I, I'm not going to answer that question. And then we move on to the next one. That happens yeah. a lot. It happens a lot. People will ask questions and the higher self, sorry, I'm not answering that question. Then we move on. Mm-hmm. So, so the higher like, self always wants what's best for you. Always. Right. Right. They, they never wants uh, to misguide you or anything like that. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, are, are there things about the Mandela effect that we didn't touch on that you th- think it's important? for our viewers to kind of know about i mean uh, have you seen things which you find which are misinformation or things which trouble you or things which you just things in this interview we didn't kind of talk about that you kind of wanted to relate because i mean there's a lot of there are people you know as i mentioned before which talking about the mandela effect and you might have seen things which you thought on youtube whatever that was misinformation or maybe you think that's something that people should really know about that they're not really getting so there's is any sort of comments or thoughts you have about that in general, in terms of how you want to kind of um, make people more aware and more critically aware of what's taking place that we haven't touched on, Byron? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, well, real, real quick. So, if you're interested in a session, we'll put mm-hmm. it in the link. The website okay. is www.soulharmonics.net. Yeah. Um, I offer QHST, but I also offer another method called Soul Harmonics. So I do have to print techniques to, to choose from. Um, in regards to answering your question, I think it'd be better to give a, a big picture overview of what's going on in this reality. 
Essentially, yeah. the universe is a multiverse, like a bunch of bubbles floating around. The beings in each uh, multiverse, they're not supposed to escape and inter interact with each other. One day, a species, by some fluke, something happened. It was more of an accident. They got out, and they bounced into our universe, and they just happened because there's, the universe is connected with you. I guess you call it wormholes, kind of like veins through a body. And they just happened. There's three wormholes to our Earth, and they just happened to end up here. Once they were here, then they began to take over this place. So there's the founder race theory that there's this founder race that goes around and creates these planets and they bring um dna from different plant places and they create the, the the planet and then it gets going everything seems fine they leave and they go off to the next place and they create another uh, world and and anyway so this place was created and then there's a species here and one day another species that, that i was talking about busted in here and took the place over and it happened at a time where this species was advanced enough that where they had spaceships that could leave and they all evacuated earth and left to get away from these folks but they they left the indigenous species and you know they call it in the hands of old man they were left behind and you know the pyramids were left behind you know you can't explain that one well that belongs to the original race and um so they basically this place is designed to be a very benevolent place you're supposed to learn a lot go through these beautiful experiences etc cetera, etc cetera. they got taken over and they created all these programs and you know they you know, unfortunately, they're in control of this place. And I hate to say this, but, you know, the good guys, they, they lost control. And this mm -hmm. place got completely taken over. And then there's a, a cry made out to the universe. And the benevolent beings uh, answer, like, you know, Palladians, Arcturians, you know, all these different species out there that have limb beings heard the call. And they, they, they were advanced enough to where they could decide to, you know, take their souls and incarnate into a human vessel. And they began to incarnate. And with the effort to try to begin to wake up this place. And that's when the theory of why we're beginning to wake up so much is because the, as a collective consciousness, there's enough advanced mm -hmm. beings here waking this place up, which would also explain why you talk about the other people act a certain way, but we act different because we're, uh, you know, the Badalam beings, you know, that came here as a cry to help and save this place. And it seems like every time we do something to fix a place, they have the because they have the ability to control time they can go back in time they call it reset they go reset they go back in time and they change things they mess it up again and then we try to fix it and they re reset and we you know there's been lots of times where we just go through these loops over and over again and then you know we eventually move forward and it's kind of like take two steps forward one step back and there's just this, this constant you know um, you know struggle battle whatever you want to call it that's happening and you know the blend beings are doing everything they can to get back control of this place and it's just a very difficult task because of the species, of the folks that are indigenous to this reality, that they didn't come from somewhere else to help. They're actually indigenous to the species. We can't just like take a hammer, hit them on the head and say, wake up, because they wouldn't be able to, to, to handle the reality. It's just too much of a shock. Because reality is nothing what you think it is. It's just, it's just not. And to mm -hmm. take a being that's you know, here and bump them up here, and if they're not ready, they can go cuckoo crazy and lose their mind and just horrific. It'd be more detrimental to the, the indigenous species to wake them up than to just, you know, leave them under control. It's a terrible decision. That's like, do we make them go crazy or we do, do we leave them under control? So the decision was made to come in and try to change, I guess you call it the vibrational frequency and way to raise the consciousness of the indigenous species and get them up to a level. To, and we're trying to get them up to a level to we can finally take at least a, a, the first veil off and then mm -hmm. go okay what reality is and then and then they can choose to wake up or they can choose to stay dumbed down supposedly because it is free will at the end of the day and so that that's really going on in the, in the big picture um you know and i think that it's a high level review i think answers a lot of your questions so the indigenous species refers to the humans are in this control earth and then we are the people who are experiencing the Mandela effect. We are the non-indigenous species, so to speak, from the free earth. Is that is that my correct kind of understanding? Well, not not only free earth, but you know, like let's say Palladians, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because I heard this theory um, that we are here in this control earth. I'm not sure if it's my yourself. I heard it somewhere in the, online. We're sort of here. To wake up this place, I heard something. Yeah, like, like something like. Uh, 
Did like prophets hear? of the past, you know, like uh, yeah, like we're here, like yeah. our, us people in Mandela effect. Our we're put here, or was we're here to wake these people up uh, from their uh, yeah. that's our mission because we were chosen. I, I don't know if I buy that one because you know, to yeah. me, it's like a negative. This whole thing is uh, controlled by some negative consciousness. But do you have any sort of perspective on what? I mean, are we are we here just because of this accident with this dark side of the moon, and we're just sort of stuck here, is that what's really going on? And we just happen to be here and now we're in this place of alongside with these indigenous species, which are kind of like with maybe part of their brain missing in my view, but is we're just sort of locked trapped here. What's going on with that? What's your view on that? I mean, the answer is all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like everything so, so is there, uh, so with this sort of, you said dark side of moon technology, whatever, is there any chance of people who have experienced the Mandela effect to, on their own spirit, because of their heightened consciousness, to be catapulted back? You know, like, you know, sometimes I fantasize about, you know, like the, you know, the end part of The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy wakes up and she's in her own bed and goes, oh, I was in The yeah. Wizard of Oz. No, it wasn't a dream. Oh, I'm back with my family. Is there any chance? Yeah. Of something like that happening, where we're catapult, where we're something that we do here, like kind of like what you see in Star Trek, corrects things, and we're all of a sudden back on our own sort of free Earth, or we kind of stuck here. Do you have any kind of view on that? Well, that that's the common thread that I see through all my QTT sessions is that they're working on bringing everything back to one to the original way it's supposed to be, where you know everything's good. So hopefully that happens one day to answer your question. Yeah, because, you know, you know, I mean, I just have this, you know, this feeling that maybe like the people, we have us, and then there's a lot of people here that think the old earth is destroyed. But if it isn't, if there's still a free earth, whatever, and if the free earth is aware of our presence is somehow spiritually missing from that consciousness, then maybe... Oh whatever entities that are there are trying to pull us back in where we're supposed to be. I mean, that's just a theory of mine. I don't, I don't know, but that's one, that's one of the theories I've been kind of bantering about. Hmm. Well, yeah. I, I just think that's true. I, I, don't, I really don't have an opinion on that one. Yeah. Or, or, um, I mean, I just, I hope that's the case. That's all I can say on that one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, well, well, yeah. What would you have any sort of thoughts you wanted to mention as well, Santosh? Anything else? Uh, not much. Well, you know, sometimes when you're when you're in a dream, right? That dream becomes your reality, right? Like everything feels like uh, yesterday. Last night I had a dream, and I was like feeling things. I could taste things. It was like, I, like I didn't know it was a dream at that point, but it felt it was so real. Could this reality itself just be like a dream, or do you think there's something? That's more concrete here. That's actually real. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, controlled Earth is more like a dream. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, they 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 don't want you to know that it's more of a dream than real, because what happens in dreams when you wake up, you, all of a sudden you can fly. All of a sudden yeah. you can take That'd over the awesome. place, run it, and that's one of the reasons why they take us in our dream state. So we don't wake up to the fact that you really do are you are free and you control this reality. Because yeah. if you were to wake up and realize that you could just get up and fly one day, you'd probably get up and start flying, in other words. You know, yeah. um, we control so much more than we can even fathom. Right. Like but, like uh, Neo from the Matrix. Once he was awakened up, he could do anything. Like right. uh, you know, but, but, you know, it's all it, it's it's about belief and faith, you know. You know, mm -hmm. as Jesus Christ said, faith is a tiny as a mustard seed, you can say that mountain over there, move and move. I actually, um, you know, unfortunately, I do know evil insiders, as I call them. Um, uh -huh. They One day we got in an argument and she held up the pen and said, Byron, you see this pen? If you believe this pen can do anything in the universe, and if you believe that with, with every essence of your body, now that pen can literally do anything in the universe. All it takes is for you to believe it. And this is a person right. who's full-blown evil, evil insider. She's a total insider. Oh. And she oh. told me that. So they don't want you to wake up to this. And it's a yeah. hard thing to wake up. We were talking about it. We're having a nice logical conversation. But it's one thing to chit-chat about. And it's another yeah. to put it in action and actually apply it and to believe mm -hmm. it. 
And, and, and you know, that's the next step. And QHC can help you achieve and get there. I've seen some magicians, like, I know, uh, have you seen Dynamo? They're just, I don't know if they're illusions or, like, they're kind of, like, like uh, as you said, like, they're controlling the reality somehow. Uh, it, uh, it's, well, they're, yeah. I think they're stopping time, and they're, and they're yeah. also using things you can't see. And then they, mm. they do the trick, and then they, they start time again. They're, they're ah. stopping and starting time. Right, that's they're, how they do those. They, they, have, they know the species that can start and stop time. Like I said, they, they can stop time to play a joke. It's child's play to them. And by the way, I should warn you, my battery is getting low. I oh, got sure, sure. Okay, okay. Of course, of course. Okay, yeah. one, one quick question to just to wrap things up is that um, with this pandemic going on, is there a concerted effort to force us in a state of consciousness to the pandemic where they're, they're trying to pull us into an apocalypse, an apocalyptical dystopia just through just riding on our belief that of the direction we're going into is where we should be going into. I guess there's some sort of, because I noticed that there's so, you know, people talk about changes in the biblical passages and the Mandela effect. This is this, like it's an effort to try to kind of manipulate time. I think you were also mentioning that maybe the part of this Mandela effect is when we get awake and then they go back in time and they keep correcting things and all this discrepancies. And as we become aware, we become aware of all this effort by these negative entities to kind of correct things. So is there sort of an effort to through our just belief, you know, belief to pull us into this negative dystopia that we're that we're seen to be headed towards this um this vaccine pandemic agenda. Well you know you know when I like when I was in the military and worked with the president Great right Airborne early morning morning ring. And I'm reading these CI top secret manuals. And one thing that became very evident to me is that everything the military is involved with has to do either with money or control. Mm -hmm. And those are the two objectives, money or control. And that's the answer to everything. So the, the root cause of whatever they're doing is vaccine. They, you know, what I've learned through life and being in the military and being exposed to all this top secret stuff is there's, there's either money, control, or both behind the vaccine. And I guess that's the Mandela effect as part of how some that money control power agenda of these um, that they're trying to do as well. That they're trying to convince us is misremembering that is a part of a control, an apparent control agenda. All right. They they they're they're discrediting you so you don't wake up. Yeah. You know, yeah. one thing I learned, you know, I, I I used to read the I used to get the uh, the daily worldwide CIA worldwide intelligence report same briefing the U.S. president got. And, you know, the majority of the stuff in there, the press has never heard about, it's never been reported on. The few things that did land in the media, a very small percent, were just so twisted that they're just so far the, from the truth that it might as, might as well have not even been the truth. And I'm not talking about public stuff like, you know, did they go out and report on the war? I'm talking about the secret stuff, the top secret stuff that I'm reading. It just doesn't get out there. If it does, it's just twisted. And basically, um, to this day, you know, the, the, the American public and, and the world, they, they have no clue what our, our government, our military is doing. It, it's, 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 it's just, it's unbelievable, um, the atrocities that are happening. It's oh, just, it's unbelievable. And the public never finds out about it. You know, only one, you know, I, I remember there was one congressional hearing where um, all of the North was being uh, interviewed by Congress or, you know, whatever you call it. And they asked him about, you know, some manuals the CIA had. And he said, no, we don't have those. And, well, yeah, we do have them. You know, we, we do all kinds of things. But I'm all the governments in the world, typically, actually all, but a lot of governments, you know, do this. Um, but oh, so basically, you know, I, I can just like, you know, you know, back in the day, I, I had, in, you know, I'm reading the top secret manuals and. It, what's going on in, in the public media is nothing close anywhere near the truth to what's really happening. And you're just not going to get that truth because, you know, someone like me, I knew the truth, but, you know, I'm, I, I, it, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a nurse, I'm sworn of a secrecy oath. So if I tell the truth, I go to prison, you know, I'm going to Leavenworth for, for <laughs> violating my wow. secrecy, you know, and you're it, it's you know and you're in this catch twenty two. You can't tell the truth, and it it, it, it you, you know it, it's a very a powerful control system. Because I'm a good guy. I really wanted 
I wanted to pick up the phone, call Congress, and you know, say I got the, the manuals right there in my, my safe. This is the stuff you want? It's in my safe, dude. But I couldn't do that because I'd be going to prison. You know, that's so how they get you. Just not yeah. tell. And the few people that do tell, and you usually hear what happens to them if they have really good information, they end up dead not too long. You know, I mean, they no. they don't they, they don't have the time to to arrest somebody and, and put them on trial. Plus. That person is going to be on trial talking about all this secret stuff. So they don't have the time. Plus, they don't want to get out in a trial. So, I mean, I hate to say this, but, our, our, you know, we, we kill people, basically. And I don't think that's a big secret. You know, it, it's easier just to kill someone. So if you if, so you either end up in prison, you end up killed, or if you don't have that good information, they just label, uh, they just make you look crazy and they discredit you. And these are the different campaigns they do. So it's extremely, extremely difficult for the public to learn the truth. Right. And sometimes yeah. I heard they, they reveal the truth in our movies and TV shows. Like, uh, yeah. is that that's uh, oh, okay. slow disclosure. Well, not too yeah. long ago, um, I'm probably going to forget his title, but in Canada, our equivalent of the Secretary of Defense, I forgot what he's called in Canada. Oh, Paul Haley, yeah, Minister of Defense, you're talking about, he passed away recently. Yeah, and he gave, he, he, made a public announcement, I don't remember all the details, but basically saying, you know, yes, there's aliens and we're in contact with them. It was mm-hmm. just whatever. You know, so he came out, yeah, he was dying, I guess, and told the truth before yeah. he died. They're but did you hear about that? I don't know about America. We didn't hear much about it. It was, oh. it was you know, very hush-hush. You know, didn't get out. So. Yeah, yeah. What, hiding truth in plain sight was... Uh, some uh, Dr. Michael Sal, he said that happened a lot with science fiction movies. You know, they actually, people think it's just fiction, whereas yeah. there's some kind of truth behind it. So that's their yeah. way of saying that, okay, we've done our bit, we've disclosed yeah. it, and we, we hide get our it. consent. Yeah. yeah, we, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we're, we're hiding it, but we're actually educating. So I heard yeah. somebody said that, you know, you know, that they have to do this in some way. Because of some agreements with whatever. Yeah, to avoid negative karma, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, some people. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Basically, in it, and, and to make it simplistic, everything is a game, and the game has rules, and you must play by the rules. One of the rules is you must make it public knowledge. They don't say how. It, it could be a, like a, some a commercial that, that happens in like a couple of seconds, but because it was in that commercial, it got out. Now they met. The requirements of the rules now they can go do what they wanted because they they, they made it known public they, you know it's one of the rules they have it's a game so that's why they make things public in different ways but and and then they go do it awesome awesome well thank, well thank you very much byron for for our, our special midnight session for taking <laughs> the time with a very thoughtful informative discussion about the mandela effect and could you repeat your website one more time for the listeners so they can contact you about your uh, practice, your QHHT practice? Certainly, www.soulharmonics with an S, so soulharmonics.net, N-E-T. Soulharmonics with an S dot net. And awesome. can they do an online session as well, or is it like usually in person, these uh, hypnosis? Uh, well, they're, they're, QHHT has rules that make it a little difficult. That's why I created Soul Harmonics to make it easy for people. Okay. Awesome. So, um, okay. Other techniques are, are, can be done via Skype. Oh, that's oh okay. Wonderful. That's fantastic. Okay, so thank you very much, Byron. And make sure that people should contact Byron to, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the awesome guy you're bringing on. Hope. And uh, thank you very much again for taking the time in this uh, midnight session. And we hope to uh, connect again sometime. So, thank you very much again, Byron. And yes, thanks, Adam Foster. And thanks, thanks yeah. everybody, for tuning in tonight. Thank you.